Hello and welcome back to another exciting episode of Why Does My PS940 Do This? Alright, so uh, I found out the issue with the M meter not working and And now you'll see, let's see. Turn on the ammeter and there you have it. Ammeter's working. The uh, connector back there, it's the one with the orange and white and white wire on it. And uh, I just switched the wires. Actually, I looked that up because it's just a differential circuit basically that has a sensor on each side of a resistor going to this red power wire wire and I was about to test it and I thought I wonder if there's anything in their pages and sure enough there was something in the forum and the first thing that Jeff had said was try switching the wires around sometimes that's wrong and I switched the wires around even though it's not the way it says it should be on the PC board but uh, it works fine so that was the issue uh, that's the problem with you go with wire colors. Sometimes things switch up and nobody tells anybody else. Uh, so that took care of that. I mounted my fan. I want to make sure that that works and everything, and I'll install that back. And that'll go. That'll be the fan back here. So also the other thing I'm going to do is just tidy up, tidy up some of the wires here, and. Uh, I think at this point it will be shut that off and I'm going to pull this out because we know everything works now and I'm going to disconnect the coaxial cable this wire here this will be easy to tidy up I'll put a couple zip ties on it be done with that come back to here um, these were made a lot easier by me cutting them shorter and I think if you wanted to even spend more time and cut them even shorter you could probably neaten this up even more uh, but th these don't look too bad and I don't know if I'm gonna wire loom these big heavy wires together but I'll take a look at these ones down here and probably wire loom them a little bit uh, let's see how this this guy fits in here, I believe. Let's see. That should be the bottom. I didn't tighten it up yet. But that would fit on here like so. And... Yeah, that would fit there. That's right here. And then there's plugs on the board. And he supplies plugs with the kit. And that would take care of that. I don't know. I don't remember if the writing went up or writing went down on this. I will have to look. I'll have to double check. Okay, but that's that's it for now. So let me uh, shut down and, and clean this stuff up a little bit, and I'll put it back together with this. Then the last thing we have to do is the uh, fan for the the final board, and that's actually under here. So we'll get to that next. All right. And it's still recording. So either it shut off at some point. Okay, so I'm ready to put the bottom back on as I just kind of lean the radio into it. And now you can see the holes all line up. So let me put a couple of screws in. At least to make it happy.
There's one. Two. All right, well, you know how screws go on. So after I put these all these screws in, then what I'm going to do is uh, I've already kind of tidied up the wires a little bit. And uh, once I put all these back in, I'll set it back on its feet and work on mounting the fan and getting the other fan wired up. And then that'll be just about it. Okie doke. There's a... Okay, I couldn't tell if it was recording or not. There's everything all dialed in. Uh, that's all open. The fan is all mounted. So that'll go on there like so. Now I just have to, sorry. Now I just have to find the uh, the connector on the board there. I can always pop the board out, but now the more stuff you get in, the harder it looks like it is to pop things out. I I see a three wire, and I think that might be it. I'll have to read the uh, manual that they provided, where I'll watch this video. I, for some reason, I thought they had two different pins, but I'm looking, he has two different harnesses here. One's a three wire harness. And one's, where are we? Okay, one's a three wire harness. And it looks like it has two reds and two black. I guess it's actually a four wire harness. And the other ones are two two wire harnesses. Oh, that'll teach it. Yeah, so let me see. Oh, yeah, there's a four wire in there. So it looks like I can just plug that on and take two wires for this fan and two wires for this fan. And this fan, it's not that hard to get to. I know. Uh, I've gotten to it before, so that won't be hard. Actually, I think I'm going to work on this before I put this in here, just because it's nice to have room to be able to get this stuff. So these screws all just come up, and if I remember correctly, it's way down in there. So I got to. So if you look way down in there. You can see where it says uh, there looks like a six written in marker and there's a blue wire that comes up. I'm pretty sure that's it, but I'm going to double check. It's been a while. But I'll just look on the uh, schematic and see where that plugs into it. But like I said, I believe that's it. We'll pull that out and then you feed it right through here. And when it sticks out, then you can connect it to the other. And like I said, down there, if you look on the board, see that four wire? standoff connector in there that's I believe for both fans and it looks like it says 9 volts I see PA fan on one side can't see if it says anything on the other side okay if you look at the schematic you'll see right up there where it says number six that says motor so it says M What's it? Uh, M O and G and number six. So either I could conveniently name it, named it number six, or I looked at that. But better yet, we can go and look at the actual board layout. And sorry if I'm shaking a little bit here. I'm trying to do this whole it in the camera with one hand. So there's connector six right up here. It says. Making sure we got it. It says GND and mo MO motor. So that would be number six, and it looks like it's all the way at the bottom of the board. And what you can do if you want to see actually where is just kind of shrink this down a little bit. Pull this little guy back up here. wind it around these two wires and get a little bit more freedom from it. There we go. So, now I know when I was looking down at it we could see the number six the way I had it drawn. So, if I'm looking at number six, the white wire was on the right so that 
the number was in the left hand top corner so I'd be going counterclockwise half a turn. Ninety was we'll quarter turn. We'll say ninety degrees. So that means that right here on the right would be the motor. So the red's gonna go to white. And I guess the other one's black and black will go to black. Okay. So you can see that I've got the black and white or the connector pulled out here. So now that that's out, let me just go ahead and throw this back on here. And I'll put the screws back in. And we'll get ready to put this wire on. And then we'll come back. You can watch me get frustrated with putting that on. Okay. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I have some uh, contact pins, you know, just for regular pin-out connectors. And uh, you can get them on Amazon or wherever you... There's about 20 in a uh, strip, and you break off what you need. And uh, I'll solder the wires to the short end, wires from this 4-pin connector. And uh, then I'll put some heat shrink tubing on it. And then we'll be able to plug them right in. So my method is going to be is to just lightly tin the ends and lightly tin the wires and then I will just basically connect the wire to each one of them. <clears throat> if we were kind of wondering what it would be like. So let me grab the soldering iron and I'll, I'll show you on one or two. And there's one. And then like I said, I'll grab some heat shrink and put it up there and shrink that down. I might even throw a little piece of tape in between them. They're, they're definitely on there good, but just in case they should come off or something, in case they short, I'll just get a little tiny piece of uh, electrical tape. Alright, looks like uh, the 4 millimeter stuff will work pretty well. Just smash that in there, that's good for it. And we'll get that out of the way. And we'll just put this over here. I don't have a, uh, a hot gun down here, but we do have the soldering iron. So, as you can see, I just put it over there and I roll the soldering iron back over it. And that should work just fine. Probably not the best thing for the for the soldering iron, but I don't do this all the time. I don't have a lighter or anything. I looked at those hot air guns for surface mount, but I don't do that much surface mount, so I'd probably be using it just for this more than anything. Okay, so that's it. That's a one side of look. Okay, got the plug on inside there. Uh, it's not impossible, it's not really that hard, but. Uh, 
maybe before you button everything up, put that plug on. Fortunately, I, the way I had my wires run, I was able to get to it pretty easy, but if you have a large bunch of wires that you're zip tying together, uh, you might want to get that plug on ahead of time. And again, if you want to spend some extra time uh, making your wire shorter, you could do that as well. I could have made these a little bit shorter. Probably could have made them a lot shorter. Um, so let me put this up in place. And we'll, then we'll turn it on and make sure the fans work. So I should have got the screws ready ahead of time. Wrong ones, not there. Wrong ones, nothing there. But they're in here. And I believe we need six. Two, four. Why do we have one that's way shorter than all the rest? Oh, actually, we're only going to be able to put in five because this one doesn't work anymore. That was. That was not threaded. That's part of uh, that heat sink we took out. Yeah. So now <clears throat> we're going to power it up and make sure everything still works, namely those fans. Transmits turned off. Here we go there. Okay, can you see? Set. Both fans are running. So I think I'll, I may put some tape on the fan connectors just to make sure that they stay connected. I mean, they run, everything's running. But, uh... Okay, so the last thing I wanted to do was check my voltage, make sure I'm still close, close to about 28.5. And show 28.45. We're good with that. Leave that where it's at. I did end up putting tape on the uh, connectors. Everything's spinning nice and free. Just a little bit extra. And again, I guess if you if you wanted to do on your own, you could always put the uh, heat shrink tubing over that as well. But I didn't want to in case it was something I had to replace. But again, you cut heat shrink tubing off and be done with it. All right, let me put the uh, screws in and the top cover, and then let's see if we can give this thing a try. Okay, so as you can see, radio's back together, seems to be working. Uh, I did want to check a little bit into that CW, that issue that, let me turn this down, that issue that I thought was different, uh, and, but other than that, everything seems to be working well. I didn't put the top screws in because I did want to show you one more thing here. Let's see, you can see it. This screw hole back here, well, where it screws in is gone. So you can either put a plate across there, but since there's a screw on the side and one on the other side, I'm thinking it would be okay to just put, I'm going to put a nut, oops, a screw with a nut in it back there just for decoration. And so you can't tell there's a screw missing. And then we'll see how that looks when it's all together. 
but uh, I wanted to show you that before I put it back together so if you're planning on this uh, make sure you procure yourself a knot that will fit that. So something else I noticed, don't be a Tim, after I put this all together one of those handles is loose and of course I gotta take it back apart to get to the screw. There's screws inside for these handles. So if you're doing one, check that while you're in there. I can't believe with all the times I've had this apart I've never checked that or noticed that. So that'll just take a couple of minutes. I gotta pull the cases off again, but be back. Alrighty, got that back screw in. Looks good. Don't even miss it. What I'll tell you is when you're tightening it down, though, push down on this when you tighten the side screw in over here because that doesn't work anymore. Uh, the top, it sits really tight right on that uh, power supply, but it still fits. Everything fits okay. No problems there. Uh, with the CW, oh, and I tighten my handle up on the side. With the CW, uh, the noise I told you, I think what it was is I never really had the volume turned up that loud in the CW in my life. So when you turn it at a normal level, you don't even notice it. So it might have done it all along because I don't think there's any logic on that board that controls the transmit relay section. But there's send nothing. Uh, even if I go nothing. But if I let me make sure I'm in the dummy load, yeah. Piece of cake. Uh, what else was I going to say? So that looks like that takes care of everything. Um, what do I have to say with it? Lessons that we've learned. Uh, the kit's pretty easy to install. Don't be intimidated by it. You don't, I'll turn this on. You don't necessarily have to cut those wires. You, as you saw, I can kind of get it out, and really the only thing you had to cut was one or two at the transformer, and and uh, that includes the the wires coming up from the uh, 110 220 switch but you can pull all that back in if you want like I did and it works piece of cake the uh, Jeff over at CompuDigital is uh, real good to work with uh, like I said I called the help desk there or the uh, their helpline there on a Saturday afternoon and I think he was riding down the road to buy some paint he answered the phone and uh, thought I was having a problem with the with the Quinn power supply, it was kind of just like a shotgun deal, like, hey, I'll send you one out. And uh, he sent one out. I tried it, and it didn't fix the problem. Here it ended up being all along that must be a timing issue where the it comes through the switch and where the power supply gets comes on afterward, after this the switch is closed on the board. Probably gives that time for that uh, inductor to start its, its field and charge those capacitors, but... Uh, that's just my assumption. Anyhow, it's up and running, and uh, it works. It's definitely still a heavy radio, even even without that stuff out of it. I think it's still a heavy radio. But um, thanks for watching, and uh, if I have any more information, I'll put it out there. But I believe this should just about sum up using the TS940 as my guinea pig. Thanks for watching.